Okay, here we are up here at the upper shop, and I was going to do a little video on uh, my log splitter here. The other one's down at Justin's house. Um, I want to explain how all this stuff works. There's the pump. Um, let me see if I can turn the light on here. Okay, there's the pump. Um, the motor. Then you have the cylinder. Then you have the denton valve. And a filter. And that's pretty much all you have. These two are marked A and B on top. Uh, A goes to the rear of the cylinder. And B goes to the front of the cylinder. Okay. And this is... Um, I got this valve, like I say, at Northern Tools. So, other ones may be different. And then you have your end, which is three-quarter. And you, I bought this fitting there that um, goes to the half-inch. But what happens is, is the pump here starts pumping. And it gets fluid from this tank. Goes in that hose down there, comes around, comes all the way around here, and goes into the pump. Okay? It gets shot out through this hose here in high pressure all the way around, goes back up under there and goes out and goes into that fit in there. Okay? Unless you're pulling this lever here forward or backwards, it just pretty much goes through some valves inside here and comes back out and goes right back down, goes through the filter, comes back down this hose here, and goes back into the tank. So it's just actually making a constant circle until you divert it by this valve. And once you divert it, either forwards or backwards, whichever one you want it to go, this direction, if let's say you want it to go forward, then when you hit that valve forward, the high pressure comes in through here, goes up, goes into this A valve, and the A goes to the back of the cylinder and starts pushing the cylinder forward. At the same time, fluid from the other side of the cylinder gets pushed back around, down, and back into the return side. And goes back to the tank. So you actually, and the same thing happens when you put it in reverse, fluid comes out this valve, high pressure, pushes in at the front of the cylinder, and the rear cylinder comes around, pushes, and goes back into the return line. So fluid's always moving into the return line. Whether you got the valve, or unless the the log splitter is just sitting there running. It's still running a loop. And if you pull a valve, then one side of that cylinder, like right now, there's more fluid on this side of the cylinder than the other side. There's a piston inside here. And when you start pushing that lever to go forwards, this piston starts up this way. Well, the fluid has to, you have to fill this side up. Well, this side has to empty. So it has to go back in and go to the return side. So that's how it works. Uh, hopefully that explains it somewhat. Uh, the reason you want a tank is is to help cool the fluid. Because I have ran that thing air for uh, four hours. We'll just, you know, cut it off, fill it up with fuel, and start it right back up again and start splitting. And that tank will get... I mean, it'll get so hot you can't touch it with your hand. And then, I mean, that's a big tank. I mean, if you get a small, small tank, I don't know, it, it, that fluid could get really hot. But if you've ever worked around a uh, cylinder of any kind, whether it's on a backhoe or a, a track hoe or a log splitter, if you run it long enough, especially in the summertime, and you put your hand on that, on that cylinder, it will be hot. But just always keep in, remind, in mind that the fluid's always moving back to this tank. When that motor's running, it's pushing fluid out that supply line the whole time. But then again, the whole time, there's fluid coming back into the tank. 
And I put mine kind of a little bit up off of the bottom so that if there was any trash in there, if it ever got any trash, it wouldn't be pushing it right there on the bottom and stirring the bottom up. There's a little little bit of room there for it to, to take in the trash. If it does, like a little piece of metal or something, shaving where I drilled or where I welded or something fell in there, it could lay on the bottom and not get pushed out. But that's uh, that's one of the things. On the return side, it's up. Uh, probably uh, it's probably off the bottom about a half inch. I mean the uh, the well the supply side of the tank, and that's the return side of the tank. It's up a little higher here because this fluid's coming. I mean it's rushing in on this side when it's coming back. So by the time it gets over there, it's kind of calmed down. But that's how it works. If you have any comments or questions, just let me know. I mean, I, that's the best I can explain it. That's how it works. I, I know when I first started to, into hydraulics, I didn't understand that fluid was moving the whole time. I, I, you know, it didn't make any sense, you know. So I actually learned, and now I'm trying to pass a little bit on to somebody else. That's the best I can explain it. Y'all have a good one.